Hey guys, Red Spider here. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about all the heroes and zombie heroes in the core box. And we're going to talk about their powers and uh, in both modes, whether you're in zombie mode or hero mode and you're playing them um, in either or way. Uh, and then in future, if you guys want to see future videos like this, where I kind of explain, um, you know, stretch goals and other expansions that they'll come out with in time, uh, just leave a comment down below, a like down below, and I will continue to make videos like this where I explain the heroes through this board game, which is uh, Marvel Zombies. Hey guys, so um, we're going to start off with the zombies. Uh, so as I talk about hero and zombie mode, um, when I talk about zombie mode, it's when you're playing as them, as they are zombie superheroes. Um, then when I say hero mode for the zombie of the superheroes, that is when um, they are coming out and you're a superhero and they're trying to stop you or kill you. Um, and vice versa, when I'm talking about just normal superheroes that aren't zombies, and I say zombie mode, it's when they're superheroes that are trying to come and stop you as you are a zombie. But when I say hero mode, that is when you are playing as them. So I know it's a little confusing, but as I go and I explain things, uh, uh, it'll become more clear as to what I mean by that. So for Captain America in zombie mode, his thing is he likes to protect um, his, his, his allies around him. So he protects, he probably gives you more toughness or whatever. They didn't really go into it. I'm sure I could look and find more things, but his general overview is that he protects um, those around him. He can target um, enemies next to an enemy next to the enemy he's, atta he's attacking. So like it's kind of like a ricochet. It's kind of like as if he's throwing his shield and he attacks one enemy and then his shield ricochets and hits another enemy. So he's able to um, hit enemies next to the enemy that he's initially attacking. Um... He can also help allies around him to perform another action on his turn. So, like, let's say it's his turn, and he's he's strong enough where he's able to bolster his allies around him, making so like, hey, uh, Hulk zombie, you could perform another action right now. Um, you know, and maybe he picks and chooses who he wants to do that based on what the situation needs to happen. Right? Maybe you need to. Um, eat a bystander real quick before the, the superhero rescue the bystander so he makes someone you know that's able to quickly get to that bystander and eat them eat them so he kind of can kind of help his team around that captain america is very helping his team around him now if you're a hero and he is something that spawns to stop you um he gives the walkers um, so multiple man is the walkers. He gives them extra actions. So when he's around multiple man, uh, which is the walkers in this game, um, he gives them an extra action. So if they move one to, to attack or get close to you, he can give them another move or attack if he's close to them. So he kind of like continuing his whole like helping what the people around him that are his allies. Moving on to the wasp. So this is his figure right here. So moving on, actually not to the wasp, to the Iron Man. So Iron Man is, uh, he's a ranged person. So he can do missiles that do waves, that like shoot waves of enemies at a distance from him. Um, he can push enemies away from his zone. So he's very much like a ranged attacker. Um, he can attack and then slip away so he could attack and then and then kind of get away so he could like attack and kind of kite his enemies like if you will you know attack run attack run attack run um his suit allows to give him a little more control so like as i talked about in the previous video this game is about you being a zombie and the more um you don't devour things the more ravenous you become so the more out of control you become um your character it has rules that they need to do if they become ravenous where like instead of going towards your objective you have to go towards um someone and you have to eat them so his suit um as he becomes more stronger allows him allows him to have more control as he becomes more ravenous because his suit is taking over as opposed to him having control now when you are a hero and he comes out to try to stop you he attacks at a range and then any um, attacks that fail to eliminate him causes him to move away. Uh, so you, he kind of continues to have like a range attack as he's a zombie. Uh, and he kind of, if you don't eliminate him, he runs away and attacks you. Um, so Wasp, so first we're going to move on to his figure right there, which is pretty good looking. Then we're going to have Wasp, Zombie Wasp. 
So um, for zombie wasp, wasp, she can ignore target priorities. So there is a target priority. So I believe superheroes have to be targeted first. Um, but if I'm wrong on that, I have to read the rules again. But a target priority, she can ignore that. So certain targets need to be targeted first. So I believe bystanders are in the last of target, target priority. Um, that being that everyone around them is protecting them because they're bystanders. So she can ignore that. Um, she can devour bystanders even if someone is protecting them. Uh, she can move more zones than others. So she's able to fly th um, further than everyone's because she has a suit that's able to help her move faster. And she also gets a free action to devour shield agents. So she's able to um, kind of freely devour someone. And these are all, all these powers are as they get stronger, right? So if I, I say I'm in, or, in a certain order, that is like as you get stronger, you get all these powers at once. You don't get them all right in the beginning, but you get them as you get stronger. And if you're the strongest, then you have all of them. Um, when you are hero mode and she is a zombie trying to kill you, um, she... Um, She's always the last target in the priority list. So remember when I talked about priority lists, um, certain things have priority lists. She is the last of your priority. Um, and she can fly around very quickly as if she was a runner as well. So um, so she's fast and she's last of priority. So if there's tons of like enemies there and she's hitting you, um, she, you, she, you have to kill all those other enemies before you could even attack Wasp because she's small. Um, this is her figure here, pretty good looking. And then we got Hulk. So the Hulk, um, he makes all enemies around him have one less toughness. So like if he's going against Thor, right? Um, Thor has four instead of five. Uh, and then he, um, having living superheroes. So having superheroes that aren't zombies in his zone allow him to reroll dice. Um, his Thunderclap, which is one of his abilities, can roll dice based on how many mobs are around you so like you could roll as many dice as enemies are around you kind of like allowing you to hit all of them if you get all successful hits on your dice on all of them or um kind of allowing you to do more damage to one single target if you need more damage to one single target based on how many enemies are in that zone um he can devour multiple enemies uh so you know if you have a group of of shield agents you could devour most of them or all of them if you need to um so that's pretty good. He's kind of a big, angry guy, and he's big, so he's able to devour uh, multiple people. Uh, in hero mode, um, he you have to feed him a bystander. So when you are a superhero, you have to feed him a bystander so that he reverts back to Bruce Banner so that you could defeat him. So if you don't let him eat someone, you basically can't defeat him. You have to run away from him. Um, but if you feed him someone, then you can defeat him. It's very interesting. Uh, it's kind of like that moral dilemma, kind of like when you were a superhero. So that's really cool. And this is his figure here. Uh, you know, clo everything kind of closely resembles their artwork. So, so we got Captain Marvel. So Captain Marvel, um, she can eliminate extra shield troopers and specialists with each attack. So she's able to kind of like really like destroy large groups of people as long as they're not brutes or superheroes. She can kind of destroy multiple um, things. She could fly through several zones and then kind of go kind of like oh, as if she's flying and then diving straight down and she then uh, do, does an attack right away into a group. She's able to like maybe go two zones, pop in the middle of multiple people and do an attack. Um, whenever she would be dealt a wound, she you can increase her hunger instead. So instead of becoming injured, you can increase your hunger. And your hunger is, you know, as we said previously, it's one of those things where you have to manage. You have to be able to eat something soon before you become out of control and you're not helping your team because you your rules are that if you become ravenous, you have to go and eat someone else right away. So you're not able to do your objective in that mission. Now, when you are a hero um, and she's a zombie coming out to try to eat you, she flies straight to the nearest bystander to eat them. So that's her objective. So like, let's just say you're a hero and your objective is to save three bystanders and then escape. Like that's your objective. I'm just throwing a scenario out there. I don't know if this is a scenario that's real, but let's just say that's an objective. She will be, if you're in that objective and she comes up and she has to f spawn on the map, you're like, oh gosh, like this is not good. 
uh, because her thing is she's going to fly to all the bystanders, the nearest bystanders, and eat them, so you're not able to rescue them. So she might actually be a very key thing that it actually makes you fail that mission, whatever that mission is, if she pops up. So then we'll look at her figure here, and if you see, she's holding a head. That's pretty cool. Um, even in her figure, she's holding that head. So then we got Deadpool, and I actually like Deadpool a lot. Both, um, both his zombie mode and hero mode is is very interesting. I like it a lot. But we'll just talk about it. So zombie mode, he can draw extra zombie traits, so he's able to adapt and draw extra zombie traits. He also, because he how they worded it is, is because he likes to taunt people around him. He, he has a big mouth, so he actually taunts enemies towards him. He can taunt enemies towards him to attack him. So you kind of like allow shield agents and superheroes to come at you to attack you. Um, and that's like what he does. And then he can counterattack. So when he's being attacked, he could roll a dice and instead of being hit with a wound, he counterattacks, so wounding them. So he's kind of like a, a walking thorn, if you will. Um, so that's really cool to see. And then when he is uh, in hero mode, so when you when he, you are a hero and he's a zombie that comes out to um, eat you or defeat you, when you defeat him, instead of removing him from the board, you lay him on his side. You lay him on his side, and anything that's close to him, he attacks. So Deadpool's always that character that doesn't die, right? So if you defeat him... Um, you, he actually just lays on his side on the board, and he's like this permanent like obstacle that's just attacking you if you're near him. And I find that to be awesomely thematic. Like I could just imagine that in my head that you defeated Deadpool, you maybe removed all his limbs, and now he's just trying to gnaw at your ankles with his head, or or you you know removed his head, but his body's laying there without legs, and he just has arms. And he's just waving his sword, trying to attack things near him. It's it's I love it. It's incredibly thematic. Hey guys, sorry to pause this in the middle of the video. I just want to thank you guys so much for watching my videos. Uh, it means a lot to me. If you guys like this kind of content, leave a like down below. It means a lot to me. Um, comment down below what your favorite superhero is or what kind of content you would like to see in the future of this campaign of Kickstarter. What superhero you really really want to see? Um, and then, uh, if you guys could subscribe, I will continue to release kind of content like this about this Kickstarter campaign or future Kickstarter campaigns that I'm interested in about, um, or not interested in about if you guys want to see that as well. Um, and then future board games as well that I play and my review on those, it mean a lot to me, but I will continue the video. I won't hold you guys up much more. All right. So now moving on to the heroes. So we got Spider-Man here. So this, now I'm going to say this again, when I'm talking about hero mode in these, it's when you are the superhero and there's zombie superheroes coming out to attack you. And then when I talk about zombie mode, it is when you are a zombie superhero and this guy comes out to try to stop you. Uh, so we'll go into this. So Spider-Man, he can move, he can take out multiple enemies. So he could kind of, he has agility and he's able to take out multiple enemies. He can ignore enemies while covering great distance. So he's able to kind of um, web sling over multiple enemies and kind of go to where his objective is or whatever he needs to do, rescue a bystander or whatever that. Um, he can keep enemies from moving. So he uses his web slinger to kind of stop enemies from moving. So if you um, have someone that's able to see what the next spawn card is and the next spawn card makes all these walkers move and someone's going to get eaten or die because of all these walkers. You could um, web sling all those walkers that are probably going to move and keep them there. Um, he has spider senses, so he's able to see the next spawn card. So that kind of goes hand in hand with he's able to specifically um, target a group of enemies and stop them from moving is because he has spider senses and he knows what the next spawn card is. And spawn cards not only spawn enemies, they also move the zombies on the board, so you're able to kind of see who's going to move where next. Now in zombie mode, he spawns on top of the nearest zombie hero to attack them. So rather than spawning, so in this game, you have spawn zones, and they spawn over here, spawn over here, spawn over here, and you're maybe in the middle over here or in a building over here. Rather than him spawning in one of those spawn zones, he would spawn directly on top of the nearest zombie hero that's near to the spawn zone that he you drew his card. So like, let's say your Hulk zombie right next to that spawn card, but you're just far enough away, but you're the closest, so he would spawn on top of you rather than in that spawn zone. So we'll look at his figure here. All right, 
so then we got Miss Marvel. So Miss Marvel in hero mode, she has range attacks. Um, she could grab bystanders or superheroes and pull them into her zone. So from a distance, she's able to try to save, um, you know, either her friends or a bystander and try to save them, bring them to her. She could spend power. So in hero mode, um, power is like the hunger, um, but it's but it's reverse. So power, you spend it, and then you could be able to do great things, whether you have um, superpowers or abilities. You have to spend power to do great things. Um, kind of like in um, zombie mode, you have hunger and it increases, and the more it increases, the less control you have. So power in this mode gives you more control, and um, hunger in the other mode gives you less control. It's, it's kind of like, it's very switched. Um, she could spend power to move or heal herself. So she's able to spend power to move more or heal herself if she needs to heal. She can po perform a palm smash that rolls extra dice for each enemy in her zone. So kind of like the Hulk, she's able to attack more enemies that are in her zone. Um, now in zombie mode, um, she can attack from two zones away. So she's able to attack at a great distance. So she uses her stretchy arms to kind of like attack you from a great distance. So she could kind of be annoying if she has like tons of zombies or another superhero that's in front of her. Kind of like, you know, Thor, let's just say Thor is in front of, you know, in front of you, right in front of your face. And he's doing as much damage as he's hard to take down. And she's at a distance just slapping you. So that's pretty cool. So we'll look at her figure here. <clears throat> and then we got uh, Black Panther. So Black Panther rolls extra dice for each six rolled. So if you roll dice to attack, you roll a six, now you roll another dice. You roll another six, you roll another dice. You roll another dice, six, you roll another dice. And, you know, keep going. Basically, the more sixes you roll, the more hits you do. So you could, you know, you're very fast and very combat savvy. So you're able to attack um, as, as viciously and multiple as possible. Uh, you can spend power to perform extra attacks whenever an enemy enters your, his zone. So when an enemy, an enemy enters his zone, he's able to spend a power to attack him right away. So rather than, so let's just say they got two actions, they got to move and attack. So they would move into a zone, he could attack them before they even can attack him. Um, he, he can prevent wounds um, with his power, so he's able to prevent wounds and eliminate uh, zombies attacking him. So I, bel I believe you're able to, when zombies attack you, you're able to roll dice to see if that instead of them hitting you and giving you a wound, you would do that damage to that zombie instead. Now in zombie mode, he gains extra actions as the player's threat is rising. So as you get more powerful as a zombie hero, um, Black Panther is going to be able to get more actions. So he's able to move into your zone and attack multiple times or move multiple great distances to get to you and then next turn attack you multiple times based on how high your threat is. And we'll look at his figure here, which is pretty cool. And then we got Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch attacks from a distance. She's a ranged hero. She can reroll dice by spending power. So if she rolls something that nothing is good, she could spend her power to reroll dice that missed. Um, she could turn brutes and runners. So brutes are tougher then walkers and runners are faster than walkers she can make brutes and runners into walkers so she's able to alter kind of like reality in that aspect where she's able to change these brutes and runners into walkers um she can heal anybody's wounds so she's able to heal people around her this is when she's a hero now as a zombie hero and she comes out to try to stop you she will force if you're around her she will force you to re-roll all your successes once so if you roll and you roll six dice and you get three successes, you have to roll those, re-roll those three successful successes, and then you know maybe now you only get one or two successes um, from those rolls. So, but you only do it once. So it's not every success you just keep re-rolling until your misses. It's just you roll once, you got three success successes, you roll those, and now you you know whatever is your result is your result. Down, that's our figure there. And then we got Thor. Um, Thor can throw his hammer great distances as a ranged attack. So he's able to th uh, spend power to throw it, and then it does a great deal of damage from a distance. Now, it doesn't mean he's a ranged hero. It just means one of his powers that he has allows him to throw his hammer and do damage from a distance. Um, he could charge forward a good distance, and then he strikes. So kind of like he's turning into lightning, and he goes, and he goes somewhere, and then he strikes down, and he strikes enemies that he lands on. So there's that power, and then he could charge his attacks to do twice the amount of damage. So 
Um, he he make his attacks do with I'm guessing with lightning or something. Maybe he's just really strong. He makes like he's, let's say you roll six dices, you get two hits. Those two hits are now four hits because he doubled his hits. Um, when you are a zombie and he comes out to attack you, his attacks deal two wounds each, and then his toughness is actually higher than most heroes that you would go against. Then we'll look at his figure here. If you look here, you have, I love that they have his axe here, his helmet here, and his hammer. Like, it's just every hero, miniature, and artwork has so much, like, story behind it that you kind of, like, it's just kind of cool to see, like, the thematic theme behind each person. We got Doctor Strange. So with Doctor Strange, he can attack at a distance, so he's a ranged hero. He can spend power to discard a dangerous spawn card. So let's just say a spawn card pops up and it says... You know, Deadpool's coming, and we're like, ah, great, we don't really have the, you know, enough life left or whatever to fight Deadpool. So he could actually make it so you discard that spawn card and then draw another one. Um, he can teleport others out of zones. So, like, if someone's in a room and they have no way out, you know, the, the doorway has um, Zombie Hulk, and the window has tons of walkers and runners, and there's no way out besides them trying to fight their way out and maybe they'll die. He can spawn them out of that area into his zone. Um, he can eliminate nearby runners and walkers. So he's able to kind of just make them disappear if they're near him, um, runners and walkers. And like I said, this is all as you get stronger. So you're not going to have that eliminate runners and walkers right away in the game. You're going to have that as you get stronger. Um, he could spend power to perform extra attacks. So that's what he does. And then when he in zombie mode, when you're a zombie, he acts as a walking spawn point. So let's just say, um, you know, he's in the zone, he's in a zone and, and your map that you're on only has three spawn points and he's in it now. Now you have four spawn points. So now you're spawning from this zone over here, this zone over here, this zone down here. And wherever Dr. Strange is, you're spawning more um, shield agents to stop you as a zombie hero in his zone as well and he's moving towards you so this is like a walking spawn zone that's making multiple shield agents just pop out of nowhere um right next to you but yeah guys if you like these kind of videos and you want to see further what me talking about the x-men resistance one and going through all those as well and then all the stretch goals as those start to become more revealed um just leave a like down below um leave a comment and uh, talking about your favorite superhero or anything like that that'd be amazing uh, to talk about um, what you're excited about this game and different heroes or um, zombie heroes that you're interested in and excited to play as. Uh, if you guys can subscribe down below for future videos, I will be releasing more videos as this campaign continues. See you guys next time.